Are you somebody who's been interested in making content about a hobby or a topic that you love, but just weren't sure where to start? Or maybe you have an iPhone, but don't really know how to get really good quality video out of this. Or maybe you were even considering purchasing a camera. Hint, hint, after this video, you may not need to. All right, here's the deal. In this video, I'm gonna break down everything you need to know in order to start filming and making content straight out of your iPhone. How to shoot high quality videos. We're gonna be talking about settings. We're gonna be talking about audio, lighting, other gear you may need, and some tips and tricks along the way. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, then make sure you guys are sub to the channel and let's get right into it. Phones have come so far these days, it's quite crazy to think that you have a camera and a computer built in in the palm of your hands. You can quite literally film, edit, upload, as well as market a video all from the same device. Heck, you probably didn't even notice that I switched over to recording this entire segment on an iPhone. Pretty cool. Okay, let's talk settings and what settings to use when you're recording, right? So first and foremost, let's talk frame rates. Now the frame rate options that you have on the iPhone, when you open up the camera app, you're gonna go into record video and you're gonna see several different options here. Now you have your 720p and then you have your 1080p. You obviously wanna go with a 4K format cause that's gonna give you the most quality out of your iPhone. So I'm gonna stick within the 4K options here and you'll see three options here, 24, 30 and 60. Now this is, this is one of the biggest arguments that filmmakers have all the time, which frame rate to use. I personally like using 24 frames per second because it gives me the most pleasing motion blur for my eyes. Now, 24 frames per second is what most Hollywood movies use, and that is considered, I guess, arguably the most cinematic frame rate to use. Now, there are a lot of creators that also use that second option there, which is 30 frames per second, such as MKBHD. He's a big proponent of using 30 frames per second because it gives you slightly more lifelike uh, YouTube feel. With both of these, I would suggest just film yourself in both. Watch it back, play it back, and see what fits your fancy or suits your fancy hat. So if you're filming yourself, I'd probably stick with either the 24 or the 30. And then if you're doing B-roll or slow motion or action shots, I would go with the 4K 60 frames per second because then when you're editing, you can actually slow down the 60 frames per second to conform to a 24 frames per second or a 30 frames per second timeline. Now, having shallow depth of field, like you know how you guys see like the background and stuff here is pretty blurred, right? That is a desirable look, right? When people see that on a, on a video, it looks a little bit more professional. Now, getting that with a bigger camera, such as the one I'm filming on, is so much easier because the sensor is pretty big. Like this is a full frame sensor, whereas the sensors on your iPhone are not that big. Now, that being said, what you can do to try to get you that shallow depth of field is move closer to the object or subject that you're filming. Now, when you move closer, it's going to blur out the background just a little bit more, and that gives you a little bit of that shallow depth of field feeling. Now, here's also me switching over to cinematic mode just to show you how that looks. It basically uses software to artificially emulate that shallow depth of field and give you the software enhanced version to kind of just mimic what you would see out of a bigger camera. Now, this is not perfect, and as you can tell like it's kind of rough around the edges but for the most part people may not even notice right on a video when I'm just watching th this looks mighty good like I, I wouldn't believe this is out of an iPhone now another thing that I want to quickly discuss here is exposure and autofocus you see how where I have my subject the camera here and the background there right the background is kind of blown out because we're kind of focused on the camera but the moment I tap here it focuses on the outside and this area becomes darker now when I come back to my camera this area again and becomes the area of focus as well as becomes brighter. Now, another thing I can do is tap on here and I can adjust how much exposure I want here. Let's say this is too dark. I can move the sun icon up and basically make it a little bit brighter. But the problem is, again, I wanna move my camera. You see how it auto exposes to outside and focuses on the outside. So what you wanna do is press and hold that area until you see this, AEAF lock. That's basically auto exposure and auto focus lock. And and now if you move the camera, it's not really going to do anything. And it's gonna stay locked on focus as well as exposure to that area. Here I'm gonna dial up the sun a little bit more so this area is exposed a little bit more. And now I can do the B-roll shots or whatever shots I wanna do without fearing for my exposure or focus to change. 
Next, I wanna talk about audio quality, and I can't stress this enough, guys. Super, super important. A lot of people just turn on their phone and start recording with the iPhone quality audio. Like, trust me, you wanna get a proper mic. Nothing replaces a proper mic. To give you an example, this is how your iPhone microphone will sound if you were to just record on the camera. Now, here is a Rode Wireless Go system, which is something that I do recommend, and I'll talk more about it when I uh, mention the gear, uh, but this will make a huge difference. Okay, now let's talk about the next important thing when it comes to audio, and that is music. Now, music is a huge part of videos. Like, it literally defines the vibe, the mood that you're trying to go for, and it brings the entire video together. Which brings me to a huge problem that majority of the people that are getting into content creation have. What do I do for music? Fear not, because that is today's sponsor. Look, the problem is you can't use any soundtrack or song or music because you're gonna get hit with copyright strikes and that's gonna delist your video. So Artless is a tech company that provides creative tools and digital assets to creators such as myself and yourself that gives you access to curated royalty-free music and sound effects that you can use for your videos and you don't have to worry about it. And they do a really good job in terms of indexing and like organizing it to make the entire content creation process a lot easier. In fact, all the music and sound effects that you heard in this video are from Artlist. I just go on there and it's super easy to find the exact music I'm looking for and they keep adding new music and effects daily. Their personal plan is one of the cheapest that I've seen for a music provider like this and it comes in at about $9.99 billed annually per month and I can confidently say that getting one of these subscriptions is one of the best things I had done when I first started uh, my whole content creation journey because it just makes your life so much easier. In any case, if you're interested, link will be in the description down below and hear me out. If you use that link, you're gonna get two extra free months added on to your membership. So don't miss out on that. Click that link and get those two extra free months and let's get back to the video. Next, I wanna talk about lighting. And here's the thing. You don't necessarily need fancy like lights and equipment. It's always gonna be good if you can invest in that. But if you're just starting out, honestly, this is gonna be your best friend. If you're able to find a nice window that you can sit beside and film, that's gonna be your bread and butter. Now on top of that, if you can also pick up one of these guys, which is like an Aperture Amaran, or pick up one of these guys, which is an Aperture MC, uh, I'll have all of these linked down below. But yeah, you can have one of these on a tripod on your other side as well, and that's gonna give you both your key light and your fill light, and it's gonna it's just gonna look a lot more professionally done. But let's say you gotta shoot outdoors for whatever bit you're filming, then I would recommend you pay attention to the weather conditions. You wanna film when it's overcast or cloudy or during sunrise and sunset. If you have to shoot midday while the sun is out and blaring, then you wanna look for like shaded areas. Okay, next let's talk about gear. This is probably like my favorite part. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna recommend is getting a tripod. This thing folds up super tiny. And basically this thing just fits like in any backpack. Now this is super expensive because I actually got this for using with like my regular cameras and stuff like that. But there are a bunch of budget options that I'm also gonna list in the description down below. So if you wanna check those out, I think a tripod is an absolute like necessity when it comes to filming because you're gonna need some way to <laughs> prop your iPhone up while you're talking to the camera. Now, what if you are, you know, just walking around and hand holding your phone, um, or you have a desk or something like that to set your phone up on, then one of these like mini tripods works really well, especially even if you're gonna like be like vlogging or anything like that. And I'll tell you what I use this with in order to mount my phone. Basically, it's one of these guys. I swear by these. These are Moment like MagSafe mounts. If your iPhone is one of the newer iPhones and it has MagSafe technology, I can't recommend these MagSafe mounts enough. This allows me to use the MagSafe mount and basically just magnetically sticks onto my phone on the back here and then I can just take it off whenever I want. Also, it comes with this mount up top, so if you wanna mount like a microphone or anything like that. And yeah, you can just screw this onto your Pixie and there you go, you have like a perfect like vlogging setup. And then when you wanna put it down, boom, just put it on the table and you're good to go. And the other big thing I mentioned was microphones. So the one that I personally love using is called the Rode Wireless Go. Uh, I have the two pack one, there's like a three pack one as well, but the two pack one is like more than enough. And this thing works Excellent. What you're gonna need with the iPhone though is this guy, which is called the 
SC7 cable. You're gonna take that cable, you're gonna plug it into your iPhone adapter, and then the iPhone adapter gets plugged into your iPhone, and voila, you're gonna have that crispy audio. And then the other one, uh, so one end goes with the iPhone, and then the other end, you just, you can little, it has a mic on it, built-in mic, and you can just clip it on yourself, and boom, you're done, like that's your setup. You don't even need a laugh mic to plug in here. Uh, you can just use this as a mic, and it works really well as well. And the last thing I wanted to mention was the lighting, which we've already discussed, so I'm gonna leave that also linked in the description down below. All right, so that's about it. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this where I go more into detail. Uh, this one is kind of high level macro, but if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like content like tech gadgets, filmmaking, and lifestyle, please go ahead and smash the subscribe button. And as usual, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, stay blessed, peace.